Hey internet, thought I'd do a fun video by pitting an old first generation i3 desktop processor against a modern sixth generation i7 mobile processor. For anyone that even knows a little bit about computers, desktop processors are always better than their mobile counterparts if they're the same generation. That's why the i7-6700K will always mop the floor with its top notebook counterpart which is the i7-6700HQ. Hence why those ultra high end gaming laptops pack in desktop processors. With that being said, can an old i3-550 desktop take on the modern i7-6500U mobile? Let's first take a look at the basic specs of the processors. The i3 came out in 2010. It has a 32 nanometer lithography, 2 cores with 4 threads at 3.2 GHz with no turbo boost at 73 watts TDP. So under load the average power is around 73 watts dissipated. With 6 years worth of architecture upgrades, newer i3 desktop processors are definitely more efficient and perform better. No doubt the current generation desktop i3s should crush this one. Next is the i7-6500U. Most of the essentials are the same as the i3. 4 MB cache, 64 bit, but the lithography is less than half of the first gen i3 at 14 nanometers. Performance wise, since it is one of the more power efficient mobile i7s, it's not a 4 core 8 thread processor. Instead it's a 2 core 4 thread like an i3 and it's clock lower at 2.5 gigahertz. Newer generation Intel processors also have turbo boost which temporarily closes the gap in speed. The i7-6500U turbos to 3.1 GHz, which is only 100 MHz less than the i3's base frequency. The TDP is also a lot lower at 15 watts. Mobile processors need to have lower TDP, otherwise laptops would only last 10 minutes per charge. Unless of course it has a super huge battery like those gaming laptops. I'm sure for those, half the weight is from the battery alone. On paper, the desktop i3 should win over the mobile i7. Its base clock is already faster than the i7's turbo clock. But keep in mind, the shrinking of the die and over 5 years worth of architecture improvements might be enough to give the victory to the i7 mobile. Pound for pound, or I should say clock speed for clock speed, they may not be equal. Like how 10 years ago, AMD's lower clocked Athlons crushed Intel's higher clocked Pentiums. We shall see how well the architecture improvements of the core series have improved with this test. Here are the specs of the two systems used for this test. The processors are both two cores and four threads, so they're even in that department. Both also have 8GB of DDR3-1600 RAM. Now there were some differences for these machines that I had no control over, either due to lack of resources or the setup was simply impossible. The i3 system is equipped with a Radeon HD 6770, whereas the i7-6500U has on-chip graphics, Intel HD 520. This difference was something I had no control over, as there's no way to slap a video card into a laptop. Well, unless you count the Razer Core, but this laptop doesn't even have a Thunderbolt connector. The i3 system might have an advantage on the graphics department, but I think it will be balanced out with the fact the laptop is equipped with an SSD, whereas the desktop has a 7200 RPM hard drive. Essentially, the desktop i3 computer has a better graphics card and the laptop i7 has the better hard drive. I don't know if that's going to mean much for these tests, but we'll see at the end. The benchmark programs I'm going to use are Cinebench and Geekbench. A better graphics card may help out on the render test for Cinebench. As for the hard drive, I couldn't find much information if SSDs indeed helped Cinebench or Geekbench. The computers are also running different operating systems. The desktop i3 with Windows 7 and the laptop i7 with Windows 10. I've read Windows 10 may give an extremely slight increase in scores, but not anything game changing. So operating systems might not be that important for these tests. Hopefully with these differences, the test remains for the most part fair. Okay, let's run Cinebench first. I sped this up a bit. The laptop i7-6500U seems to be faster at rendering than the i3 desktop. Yep, the i7 is going to win this test. 
with a Cinebench score of 265. Lagging behind is the i3 with a 174 score. What a surprise. A lower clock, lower power consuming CPU won by basically having more efficient architecture. But it could also mean the SSD on the i7 helped more than the better graphics card on the i3. Someone with more knowledge on Cinebench should let me know in the comments. Now let's do the Geekbench 32-bit test. It sort of looks neck and neck with the i7 being ahead. Actually, the i7 is pulling away. Yep, the i7 won again. So this little 15 watt TDP processor is actually pretty beast compared to its ancient predecessor. There's the scores. The single core gap isn't that big between the two processors. Actually the big difference seems to be from multi-core. Perhaps the 6 years worth of architecture improvements have made drastic multi-core improvements over older generations. It's still scored higher on the single core as well. But I think with Intel's Turbo Boost, the i7 was clocking 3.1 GHz for most or all of the benchmark, essentially matching the i3's base speed of 3.2 GHz. So there you have it. The i7-6500U 6th generation Skylake mobile processor crushes the i3-550 1st generation Clarkdale desktop processor. At the end of my test, I actually ended up having more questions than answers. Did the laptop's SSD have that much of an influence over the scores? I thought having a better video card on the desktop be the balance for it lacking an SSD. Maybe the operating system? Are the 6 years of architecture upgrades really that massive of an increase over older architectures? I suppose that does make sense. 6 years before the first generation i3 were Pentium 4s. And for those of you messing with computers during that era, you know how terrible and hot those Pentium 4s were. A benchmark between a first generation i3 versus a Prescott Pentium 4 would be a beatdown. So maybe it isn't a stretch that architecture improvements can make even a little 15 watt CPU destroy its great 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 grandfather CPU. Also, what if it's just electronic degradation? Perhaps if this i3-550 was brand new, it would perform better? I mean, this computer has been pretty much on 24-7 since 2010. All these questions make my head hurt. Leave your thoughts and ideas about these results on the comments. Maybe someone better informed can enlighten me. Thanks for watching.